All right, happy Tuesday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea with the latest on what's happening in the tropics. And we've got a pretty big storm in the Gulf of Mexico. It is now a category two hurricane. This tropical cyclone has been strengthening quickly as expected. And of course, I am talking about Idalia, which is now at 100 miles per hour for those maximum sustained winds. So let's get right to your update. I want to show you what Idalia looks like on our tropical satellite, and it is really starting to get organized, becoming more symmetrical and trying to develop that eye in the center of this circulation. And of course, that eye wall developing indicates that strengthening, that rapid strengthening that it is going through. So it is looking pretty healthy and it is getting closer to the west coast of Florida. So it's not going to have a huge amount of time to strengthen and to develop because it's expected to make landfall in less than 24 hours tomorrow morning. But between now and tomorrow morning, it is expected to jump from a category two hurricane all the way to a category three as it pushes up towards the west coast of Florida, likely making landfall in between Tampa and Panama City, Florida. So this is going to be a pretty dangerous situation and significant hurricane for the state of Florida. You can see those darker colors indicating some of that deep convection in the center of this system and some of those stronger thunderstorms. We've got hurricane warning out for Tampa Bay and for a big portion of the west coast of Florida as this hurricane gets closer to land. I want to show you some of the rainfall. Of course, it's not just actually when the hurricane makes landfall. The impacts are felt several hours before landfall, and we are seeing that on our radar at this point. Fox Red Radar showing some of those outer rain bands lashing central and southern portions of the Florida Peninsula. In fact, I saw a tornado warning or two down around the Naples area a few hours ago and we had a severe thunderstorm warning also pop up very close to Miami. So anytime you have these tropical systems getting close to land, there's always that threat for severe thunderstorms that could start to rotate and produce some of these tornadoes. Also, I want to show you some of the sustained winds that are being picked up across portions of Florida. The west coast of Florida, southwest Florida, Fort Myers, Naples, getting wind gusts sustained close to 30 miles per hour at times over the last six hours. Those winds will only pick up as these rain bands and storms start to get closer and as the hurricane brushes by to the west. No landfall for southwest Florida, but that landfall likely taking place a little bit farther north up around the big bend of Florida. So as I mentioned, Idalia has jumped from a category one to a category two hurricane at this point. Some of our buoys out in the eastern Gulf of Mexico showing wind speeds now close to 40 miles per hour off to the east of this hurricane. 30 to 35 mile per hour wind speeds being reported to the north and east of that center of circulation and wind not quite as strong off to the north of the hurricane. But of course, those winds will be picking up as we go through this evening and tonight. I want to give you the official track of Hurricane Idalia. This is as of the latest 4 p.m. advisory. As I mentioned, the hurricane did jump categories from a category one to a category two. Now with maximum sustained winds around 100 miles per hour. So that is getting up there. Of course, the wind gust will be even higher than that. Currently movement to the north at 16 miles per hour, and that is a little bit quicker. So it is starting to race towards the west coast of Florida. Pressure down to 972 millibars. It was around 978 millibars. So as that pressure falls, the wind speeds usually jump up. So that is exactly what we're seeing. All right, here is the official track. 1 a.m. Wednesday, likely a Cat 3, Category 3 hurricane. That is a major hurricane that is bearing down on that west coast of Florida, likely making landfall mid to late morning on Wednesday off to the north and west of Tampa. Then it's going to roll across northern Florida 1 p.m. Wednesday near Jacksonville, still as a hurricane, a Category 1 hurricane, likely with 85 mile per hour winds. That's why Jacksonville currently under a tropical storm warning. And if this forecast verifies, they may get upgraded to a hurricane warning if this system is going to remain that strong. Going into early Thursday morning, still Idalia tropical storm winds of 60 miles per hour. It should weaken to a 50 mile per hour tropical storm by Thursday afternoon as it pushes into the Carolinas and then finally moving offshore into the western Atlantic for Friday and Saturday, but still with 50 mile per hour winds. So it's not going to weaken 
super quickly. It's still going to be a tropical storm even as it pushes offshore as we go into the weekend. Current watches and warnings, they are abundant. We've got a tropical storm watch down around Key West, Fort Myers under a tropical storm warning, but then it gets worse as you jump up to the north. Hurricane warnings for Tampa Bay all the way up close to Panama City. It ends just to the southeast of Panama City on the western side of the Florida Peninsula. Jumping to the eastern side, look at this. Tropical storm warnings now in place for Daytona Beach, Jacksonville, all the way up to Charleston. Because as I mentioned, Idalia is not just going to make landfall and fall apart. It's going to hold together likely for the next couple of days. Even into Friday as it moves offshore, it's still going to be a fairly decent tropical storm. So category two hurricane. Now this is that projected wind fill and you can see it's not just right around that eye where we're going to feel the impacts, but those tropical storm force winds are going to be felt around Daytona Beach, Tampa, Jacksonville. And of course, the strongest core of wind will be closer to that eye wall and closer to where it makes landfall. And that's going to be northwest of Tampa and southeast of Panama City, likely by Wednesday morning between about seven to nine a.m. It's then going to race across northern Florida, southeast Georgia, and up into the Carolinas. So by Thursday morning, around 5, 6 a.m., still close to Charleston, where we do have tropical storm warnings in place. And then it is going to eventually move offshore for Friday and Saturday. Greatest threat for storm surge likely going to be with this area shaded in red here. That storm surge greater than nine feet potentially. And fortunately, Tampa is out of that. But we could have storm surge as high as seven, eight, up to nine feet for Tampa, but greater than nine feet, maybe up to a foot north of Tampa. So let me zoom in and show you a couple of locations that could have some of the worst storm surge, and that is going to be right around Spring Hill, up around Cedar Key, and very close to Cross City, just west of Cross City. And this is going to be west of Gainesville. Of course, Gainesville farther inland, but the coastal spots west of Gainesville may end up getting the worst of this. So that is the latest on Hurricane Idalia, quickly strengthening, now in Category 2. That's not the only thing that we're watching out there. We've still got Hurricane Franklin out in the Atlantic. It is still a major category three hurricane with 125 mile per hour winds. The good news with Franklin is that it should stay out over the open water. It will make a very close pass to Bermuda. It should get close to Bermuda by tomorrow morning. I think that will be the closest approach. Tropical storm warnings out for Bermuda because of this, but it's not going to make a direct landfall there. So that's good news because this is a pretty powerful hurricane as well. It is also going to hold together for the next several days, but then as it gradually pushes northeast into that colder water, it will start to lose some of those tropical characteristics as we go into the weekend. We also have not just Idalia, which is a hurricane, not just Hurricane Franklin, but we also have Tropical Depression number 11 that developed out in the central Atlantic. That one is expected to kind of jog north and just meander, and it shouldn't be any impact to anyone, but certainly something we will watch. Yet another tropical wave has come off of the coast of Africa, the west coast of Africa, and it has a 20% chance for development over the next two days, 50% medium chance for development over the next week. So a lot of action happening out in the tropics. We've gone through several names. If tropical depression number 11 in the central Atlantic gets its act together and becomes a tropical cyclone, its name would be Jose. Then we've still got Katia, Lee, Margot, and Nigel, plus a whole other panel of names. So we've got several additional names that we could end up using. Of course, we are now in the most active period of our hurricane season with the actual peak being in less than two weeks right around September 10th. So we've got to get through the last few days of August through September, which could be very busy. We're still forecasting an above normal season. First half of October, October could be pretty busy as well, but then after that, things usually start to fall off by the end of October and we start to get less systems throughout November. But of course, hurricane season runs all the way through the end of November, so make sure you stay alert. And now is the time to prepare across Southeast Texas. Nothing heading our way now. We'll actually have some positive impacts from Hurricane Adalia. We'll be on that western side, so we'll actually get the northerly flow on the back side of the system. So some slightly drier air will mean lower humidity for us. No major rain expected here. We should be dry Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But of course, when things are quiet, that's the best time to prepare for what could be coming later on in the season. So make sure you go over your hurricane evacuation plan. 
your insurance, make sure you have the proper coverage that you desire, and make sure your family has a plan. Make sure you have that hurricane preparedness kit and know exactly what you need to do in case tropical systems decide to head our way. Also, another great thing to have on your phone, our Fox 26 weather app. Get the latest tropical weather forecast cones, our follow me feature, and all of the latest tropical watches, warnings, tropical storm, hurricane whatever is out there we will keep you informed that is your latest tropical update we'll be tracking hurricane adalia throughout the evening and tonight and of course chief meteorologist mike iskovitz will be in for the morning keeping you updated as it is making landfall once again i'm fox 26 meteorologist ramisha shade enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe out there